I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. We're on to the divisional round now. Two steps away from playing on the biggest stage in sports. It's the Browns going up against the Dolphins. With that, let's go down to Miami. Standing by, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Sunshine State in one of America's finest cities, Miami, Florida. Coming up, it's Divisional Round Saturday, and we've got an AFC battle on tap between the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. to the 26, just a one-yard gain. A couple of Dolphins in on the stop. And that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves them needing about seven here on third down. Let's meet the offensive starters, and let's discuss Corey Coleman, first wide receiver drafted out of last year's class. And there was a reason for that. When you watched his tape, when you watched his games, you saw his explosiveness and ability to play the ball in the air downfield. Don't get hung up on the fact he only ran four routes at Baylor. Just coach him up and turn him loose. A very solid gain of 27. And early on, they're picking up right where they left off last week. And I know a lot of coaches say each game is its own. You don't really have carryover. This feels like carryover. So much confidence from the previous game that they're using to their advantage now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And a look at the starters for the Miami defense. Timmy Jernigan, play him over the nose, play him a defensive tackle, bounce him out to defensive end. Wherever you want to put him, Timmy Jernigan can play. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. And he's going to go out of bounds, taking it down inside the 25. And now a first down following that long gain. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now, because usually 
get the defense back on its heels. Calling no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And that is going to be no good. He pushed it wide to the right, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. They'll run it now out of the gun. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Time to feature the offensive starters and our first chance to get a look at Parker. Devontae Parker came out of Louisville with a guy who was known as a mature receiver. Runs routes really well, but the best part of his game, he'll jump over you at the end of a round and go get the football. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Uh-oh, Charles. Now you get to talk about your old spot, the secondary very key here in this one. Yeah, you have to cut me off because, you know, I talk about them all game long. Love to see those guys match up and challenge the best wide receivers. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to float this one deep, and this is caught inside the five. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Corey Coleman, 39 yards, and the Browns have taken the early lead. And his kick is no good. An inauspicious start here kicking-wise as this one stays a 6-0 game. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two as we'll see one following the score on the final play before break. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five yards with a new rule as he's taken down right at the 20-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time the turnover on the fumble... And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? And now here's a carry heading left. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll set up to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. A big play there out of the running game. 39 yards. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five, Five defensive DBs. backs. But then you go to six, what are you going to call that? And they call it a Double dime. Double it. <laughs> a dime, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up, but I know one thing. Offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. Yeah, we saw that advantage right there. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now it's Andrew Franks on for Miami. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And Franks' kick is good. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. So it goes down as an eight-play drive, and they cap it with the field goal. Yeah, they were able to pick up a few first downs along the way, but they couldn't keep the momentum going all the way into the end zone. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. Well, it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two, now third down. Good luck trying to get your running game going against Adamic and Sue. I mean, he is so strong. Just trying to move him, take one guy, two guys, whatever. I wish you a whole lot of luck. He usually converts an offensive running game into rubble. So here we go now, an extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. But partner, anytime someone tells me that fundamentals are leaving the game, I'm going to show them this play because they couldn't get to the passer. So what do you have to do? Get your hands up in the passing lane. And they batted it away on a third down attempt. Landry now on the return. <laughs> A good return there, call it 13 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker try on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now they'll throw here. 
here out of the gun. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And he will have first down yardage as he's blocked down at the 41. There are a lot of tough routes to try and cover. When you see a runner come out of the backfield and run this angle route. Looks like they're going to the flat and then they put their foot in the ground and cut back sharply inside. Not easily. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And he's able to get it back here to the 43 yard line. And the Browns getting set to go. And on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clear. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Corey Coleman with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Browns add on to their lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. You always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well. For the whole now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Let's go! 319! They'll look to throw now on first down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Play action fake. They'll look to throw. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. So it's on to halftime in this.